Hi everyone and welcome back to Chemistry with Kat. Over the last week we've been covering acid-base reactions and pH and pOH. Today we are going to put all those concepts together and learn how to calculate the pH of a solution after an acid-base reaction takes place. This is probably the most popular question on exams and on tests, even in high school. And I'm going to teach you why we're doing each step, so you're not just memorizing the steps. I'll walk you through one example, and then at the end of this video, I lay out the steps and talk them over. Hopefully this will help you with all your homework and exam prep. The question asks us to find the pH of a solution resulting from the reaction of 250 milliliters of 0.530 moles per liter of H2SO4 or sulfuric acid with 350 milliliters of a 0.540 moles per liter solution of sodium hydroxide NaOH. First thing we're going to do is write out the equation and balance it. So we have H2SO4 plus sodium hydroxide. Now if you remember from our first couple lessons, when a strong acid and a strong base react, they make a salt and water. We have to figure out what the molecular formula of that salt is going to be. So we'll go with the hydrogen first. This has an oxidation state of positive 2, so that means the SO4 must be negative 2. And then the OH, there's only one, so we know it's negative 1, and the sodium is positive 1. So now we know that the hydrogen and the hydroxide are going to make the water. So our salt is going to be the sodium and the SO4. The problem here is that sodium is plus 1, and SO4 is negative two, but the salt has to be neutral. So to make this a positive two, we have to put a two here, and now we have a neutral salt. And then we'll put water. Now, the most important step of this is balancing the equation. I'll start with the sodium, because I know I put two over there, so I'll put a two here. The SO4s check out. The oxygens, I have two here and four here, so six, and I only have five here. And the hydrogens, I have four on this side and only two here. So let's double this and see what happens. Our hydrogen, we now have four, and we have two plus two is four. And oxygen, we have four, five, six, four, five, six, and we're balanced. So now what I do is I write out the information that they gave us in the question. They gave us the molarity and the volume of each of these solutions. So we can use our molarity equation to calculate the moles. If you forget that, I'll link the video here, but the moles are going to equal molarity times volume. When I multiply these together, I get 0 0.1325 moles. And when I multiply these, I get 0 0.189 moles. Now I have to find the limiting reagent. Pretty much, if this reaction got all used up, I would be left with a neutral solution because I would be left with water and salt and it would be completely neutral. However, we have to make sure that it will be completely used up. And if it's not used up, we have to figure out what is going to be the excess reagent because that excess reagent is going to tell us what the pH is in the leftover solution. So what I'll do is my first method for finding the limiting reagent where I compare the two reactants. So one mole of H2SO4 is equivalent to two moles of sodium hydroxide. I'll use the moles of just one, so I'll do 0 0.1325 mole over X. And what I'm doing is I'm finding how much sodium hydroxide is needed to react with the full amount of sulfuric acid. I get X to be 0 0.265 which unfortunately is more than the NaOH that I have. So this tells me that sodium hydroxide is going to be my limiting reagent 
And H2SO4 sulfuric acid is going to be my excess. So now that I know the limiting reagent and I know the excess reagent, I can start to guess which way my pH is going to be. Because the excess reagent is the acid, I'm going to expect an acidic pH. So I can already start to think about that on my test to know if I get the right answer. So now I have to figure out how much excess sulfuric acid I'm going to have. In order to do that, I have to find how many moles of sulfuric acid are going to be used up. So I'll do the exact opposite thing. So two moles of sodium hydroxide is going to react with one mole of sulfuric acid. Now I'll use these moles because I know that's the limiting, 0 0.189, and X is the moles of sulfuric acid because I want to know how much is actually going to react. I get X to be 0 0.0945 moles. So that's how much is going to react. Now I'll figure out how much is going to be left over by simply subtracting. I start with 0.1325 moles and I'm using 0.0945 moles. I'll be left with 0.038 moles. Now this tells me how much sulfuric acid is left in the solution once the reaction is completed. All of the limiting reagent, which is the sodium hydroxide, will be used up and there will be the salt, water, and now H2SO4 in the solution. So now I can find the concentration of H2SO4 that will be left. I'm going to use the molarity equation again, where molarity equals moles divided by volume. So, the concentration of H2SO4 left in the beaker once the reaction takes place is the moles, 0.038, that's the leftover, divided by the total volume. So we have 0.250 liters and 0.350 liters. We have to add those together to get the total volume. And that is 0.6 liters. That gives me 0.0633 moles per liter. So that is the concentration of H2SO4. Now I have to convert that to the concentration of hydrogen ions. To find the concentration of hydrogen ions, I have to see how H2SO4 is going to dissociate in a solution. H2SO4 is going to give me two hydrogen ions plus one SO4 anion. So I know that it's a one to two relationship. So I know that the concentration of hydrogen ions is going to be the concentration of the sulfuric acid times two by using the stoichiometry coefficients. So 0 0.0633 times two. That equals 0 0.12667 moles per liter. Now I can use that hydrogen ion concentration to find the pH. So pH equals the negative log times the concentration of hydrogen. That'll equal negative log times 0 0.12667. That equals 0 0.897. And that is our final answer. So therefore, pH of the solution is 0 0.897. So like I said, this isn't exactly an easy question. Professors love it. So learn how to do this and also learn the rationale behind it. We're looking for that limiting reagent, but that's because we want to see what is going to be left over in the reaction, the acid or the base. Then we can use that to find the moles of what's left over, the concentration of that and the concentration of the hydrogen ions and then the pH. To summarize what we did in this video, the first thing we did was write the equation. We know that an acid and a base create a salt and water. We have to write the molecular formula for that salt. Then we balance that equation. This is so important in finding the limiting and excess reagents. Then we can find the moles of each reactant. Using the moles, we can then find the limiting reagent and then find the excess reagent. 
Now we have to calculate how much of the excess reagent will be used up once the reaction goes to completion. So remember to use the limiting reagent in this because the limiting reagent is what's going to run out first. Once we know how much of the excess reagent will be used up, we're going to calculate how much excess reagent will be left over once the reaction is done happening. Once we have the moles of that leftover reagent, we can then calculate the molarity of the leftover excess reagent. That will also tell us the molarity of the solution because remember, now what's left in the solution is the salt, water, and the leftover reactant. Once we know the molarity of the excess reagent, we can convert that to the molarity of hydrogen ions or if it was a base, we would find the molarity of the hydroxide ions. Now, using that molarity, we can calculate the pH or the pOH. Remember that if the question asks for the pH and you find that the base is the excess reagent, you'll have to find pOH and then convert that to pH using pH plus pOH equals 14. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You can turn on your notifications so you'll be the first to know when a video drops. And also, feel free to comment any questions or what you want to see next. I will see you tomorrow.